Today's show is all about the Bowers & Wilkins 705 S3 stand mount speaker. It's part of the 700 series. It also includes tower speakers, two other smaller uh, stand mount speakers, two center channel speakers, and a subwoofer. But for me, I'm just covering the 705 S3. It's beautiful, by the way. I think it looks nicer than the previous generation. It's a little curvier, it's subtle, and has an elongated pod uh, milled from a solid billet of aluminum to house the one inch carbon dome tweeter. And there's a six and a half inch continuum woofer that continuum replaced the Kevlar, those yellow drivers that we used to see on previous generations of Bowers and Wilkins, but now they're all into continuum. So around back there's a large base port, they're dimpled base ports that you've seen on many generations of Bowers and Wilkins speakers, and some of the nicest binding posts, the most beautiful binding posts, solid metal binding posts I have seen on any speaker regardless of price, really nice. By the way, the speaker weighs 21 pounds. That's a lot for a speaker of this size. It's not very big, um, but it feels very well put together. The 700 series is available in three finishes, uh, gloss black, gloss white, and the, the sample I had here today is finished in what they called mocha. Now, it doesn't really look like real wood veneer, <laughs> but they assure me that it is actually real wood. And whatever it is, it's really beautiful. When the light hits it, and it doesn't really show up that well in pictures, but when the light hits it just right, it is absolutely stunning. Oh, I will put up the complete specifications right now and note that the impedance, yes, great, it's rated at eight ohms, but it drops below four ohms to 3.7 ohms, meaning, yes, as I seem to say in almost every speaker review, you need to use this speaker with an amplifier that's happy driving four ohm loads. So as for setup, well, this time I was using the 24 inch high Buchhart speaker stands. They're tripod stands. Uh, I like them a lot, by the way. And anyway, when I had the speakers close to a wall, in this case, 18 inches away from the wall, this wall behind me, they were a little thick sounding. The bass got a little wompy there. So I used the supplied bass plugs to cut down the bass output and that did the job very, very nicely. But most of my listening sessions were over on the other side of the room where I had the speakers three feet away from the wall and then I took the bass plugs out and the speakers were, I would say, somewhat bass shy. They do not sound like a big speaker. They are small speakers with six and a half inch drivers and they sound like small speakers. So if you're into <laughs> bass, uh, you probably want to use these with a subwoofer or move up to the, high, to the tower speakers in the 700 series lineup. I used three different amplifiers over the course of this review. The NAD M23 Class D amplifier, the Pass Labs XA25 Class A amplifier, and the Linear Tube Audio Zotal 40 Plus, which is a 40 watt per channel Class AB tube amplifier. Oh, later on in this video, I will do a comparison between the 705 S3 and the Buchart S400 Mark II. They're both stand mount speakers and that will be definitely worth sticking around for. I don't wanna leave this part out. Yes, there will be an Audiophiliac viewer system of the day later on in today's show. As for the price of the 705 S3, it is $3,399 a pair. The speakers are designed in the UK. They are made in China. The warranty runs to five years. As I settled in to listen, the first thing that grabbed me was how quiet this speaker is. I don't mean that it doesn't play loud. I mean that it just seems uh, very well sorted out, very low distortion, very, very clean. Transient edge and speed were absolutely remarkable. The top end detail and air coming out of that carbon dome tweeter are truly remarkable. These speakers are physically small, but they project a huge sound stage. And then there's this phenomenon, I don't know the best word to describe this, but I would call it edge definition. I'm just making this up. Meaning that each vocalist and each instrument in the sound stage is so sharply focused and clear. They're not blurred at all. They're very distinctly laid out in the sound stage. 
So of course, what that really means is the speaker is very revealing. So when it's a great recording, played through a great system with really good electronics, you can't cheap out on the electronics or the sources when you use a speaker like this. But when you use, when you play great recordings, they'll sound great. When you play eh, they'll be eh. And when you play the really crappy sounding ones, it can sound really crappy. It's not gonna hide any flaws in the recordings. As for the music, well, I started with something a bit out of, let's say, left field. I started with the first Mothers of Invention album, Freak Out, 1966, two LP set that I bought in 1966. And it sounds phenomenal. It's very well recorded, very well recorded. And the imaging is exceptional for that time because in those days, a lot of recordings were kind of left, right, really cramped sounding imaging. Not this one. It is very open. Matter of fact, I would even call it ambient in parts. It just projects this huge stage with lots of texture and detail and air and just an amazing recording. And the 705S3 was really letting me hear it, well, in a way for the first time like that. It's not one of my go-to albums. It just sort of hit me and I thought, wow, I've been missing out. This is, it turns out, an audiophile recording. And then one of the tunes, Trouble Every Day, about how scary things were and how things felt in 1966, which was a very unsettling time. Well, it kind of feels that way right now in 2023. So it actually, it put me in the mood, you know? It just felt, wow, this sounds like now. It really, really does. So to calm down a bit, I played Harry Nielsen's cover of Mother Nature's Son, the Beatles song. And it is such a beautiful, sparse arrangement really, really good recording. Harry's voice sounds completely realized. He is all there, body and soul, coming out of these little speakers. And the string arrangement, lush, sweet, just sumptuous, really, really sumptuous. So you know, it's, it's interesting, as I'm listening, I started to have uh, flashbacks to the Vandersteen 2CE Signature 3 that I just reviewed about, well, like about a month ago. And that's that both of these speakers, the 705S3 and the Vandersteen, are both high transparency speakers. Very, very clear. Great imaging speakers, great focus. But, well, <laughs> and they're both about the same price. $3,400 for the 705 and $3,600 for the Vandersteen. But the Vandersteen is a floor standing speaker. It's a big speaker. It's not nearly as attractive <laughs> as the Bowers and Wilkins, but it has two woofers. It has an eight inch woofer and a 10 inch woofer. So it makes a lot more bass than the B&W speaker. It's also, the Vandersteen is more dynamically alive. It sounds like a bigger speaker because it is. Like I said, they're almost the same price, but that doesn't mean that you should just automatically assume that the Vandersteen would be the better speaker in your situation. The Vandersteen needs to be in a bigger room to sound its best and the Bowers and Wilkins will do better in smaller rooms. So there's always that to consider. I also like that the 705 S3's bass is somewhat tunable. You can stick the phone plug in the port to reduce its bass output when you put it near a wall, as I did, um, but you can't do that with Vandersteen. So the Vandersteen needs to absolutely be out into the room, and the Bowers and Wilkins is somewhat uh, forgiving in that way. And it also is a prettier speaker. I mean, the Vandersteen, I think it looks nice, but a lot of people don't like its looks. And I don't think anybody could have anything to say negative about the 705 S3's appearance, especially in this mocha wood finish. Really stunning speaker. So for the next uh, music selection, I chose something that's completely different, and that is uh, the soundtrack to Jim Jarmusch's film, Dead Man. And the music is by Neil Young on solo electric guitar. And it's distorted and there's feedback and it's just sound for sound's sake that Neil Young does so well. And then there's spoken word elements to this. It's a CD that I was playing. Really, really interesting. It's just floated free of the 705s. And the 705s were letting the magic happen. Nice stuff. I do have a lot of nice things to say about the 705S3, but I will have one criticism right now, and that is it's not a great late night listening speaker. When you turn this one down really quietly, it just kind of, I don't know, it didn't hold my attention. 
when listening very, very quietly. I'm, I'm looking at a speaker right now that does, and that's the Klipsch RP600M. That one you can listen to quietly. And my old uh, Klipsch Cornwall 4s, yeah, those you could listen to really, really low and still feel satisfied. But unfortunately, that's not true for the 705 S3. As for the speaker comparison, I promised earlier in the review between the 705 S3 and the Buchart S400 Mark II, it wasn't that much, there wasn't that much to do because the differences between these two speakers were stark. Now, the, um, the Buchart is a fuller sounding speaker. It definitely is a warmer speaker, less need to pair it with a subwoofer. Those, those are good things. But in terms of transparency and clarity, sorry, the, the B&W 705 S3 was way ahead of the Buchart. And, that's, and that really surprised me, the difference of how much better it really was. That's really nice. Um, now, the Buchart is a warmer, more forgiving speaker. So yeah, no, if you're playing recordings that are compressed and nasty sounding and harsh, you'd probably prefer the sound of the S400 Mark II because it's a more forgiving sound. <laughs> All right, I think we're ready to sum it up with the, so Steve, what do you really think? What do you really think of the Bowers & Wilkins 705 S3 stand mount speakers? It's a little speaker, but it's really big on clarity. It's not that little, but it's a small speaker that sounds, especially spatially, much bigger than it really is. And that focus is addicting. Matter of fact, when I return to my Pure Audio Project Duet 15's open baffle speakers, the difference in transparency between those two was stark. <laughs> I mean, I missed some of what I was getting from the 705 S3. And the Pure Audio Projects are more expensive speakers. They're $6,500 a pair. They have a, they're doing a whole different thing that I really do like. But returning to them after getting used to the clarity of the 705 S3 was, was kind of a letdown to go back <laughs> to the Pure Audio Project. I'll get past that. But anyway, that was really interesting. Um, now, the thing is, the bass on this speaker, I, I kept saying there wasn't a lot of bass, but with the bass that's there, is really good. It's really fast, really clear, very textured, um, very high definition bass. So there's no, um, let's say, bass boost that a lot of small speakers have to make it sound like they're bigger than they are, that they're making more bass than they really do. BMW is not playing that game. So yeah, if you need more bass, if you're hung up on room shaking bass, yeah, you're going to either want to add a sub or buy one of the floor standing 700 series speakers. And with that, I can say, yeah, let's do it. The Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. This one comes to us from Johan. He lives in Reykjavik, Iceland, and he has been, uh, well, putting together this current system for about five years, and he has just joined my Patreon. Thank you. As for the system, he has a Riga P6 turntable with a tone arm upgrade to a Riga RB880 and a Riga Aptica. I think that's how you say it, moving coil cartridge. The phono stage is a Riga Aria. CD player is a Riga Apollo with a separate DAC, which is also a Riga. For streaming, a Blue Sound Node 2. The preamp is a Vincent Audio SA32, uh, used with a pair of mono blocks. Those are Vincent Audio SP T700s. Speakers are Monitor Audio Gold 300s, sitting on ISO Acoustics Gala stands. He's been collecting vinyl since 1988, and his first album was Michael Jackson's Bad, which he still has. Thank you, Johan. All right, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and it's true, I am the audiophiliac, except no substitutes, and I'm saying that because there's imposters pretending to be me, trying to get money from you guys. Don't fall for it. I never ask for money, except when I'm asking you to join my Patreon. To do so is really easy. The address is on the screen. You can uh, pledge in either dollars, pounds, or euros. Um, and as I said, this, that's one of the things, Patreon is one of the things that keeps this channel going. I make my living making videos. That's all I do is make videos. Anyway, there's that. And if you just want to give me a like, a thumbs up for any of these videos that, I, that you see, please do that. And you could also, what the hell, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have yet to do so. We're going to hit, collectively, we are going to hit 250,000 subscribers 
later on this year, in late summer, fall, whatever it is, it's going to happen. I definitely see that happening. And I can't thank you guys enough. And now that the sirens are coming, I don't know if you can hear them, they're coming, I will now say thank you so much for watching, and I hope you come back again real soon. Bye-bye.